real quickly, we want to review all of the other buttons that are on the tractor. And when we look at, like the MFD and the diff lock, along with everything else that we cover, whether we're dealing with a CVT tractor or a power shift, all these buttons will activate in the same way. When you see the 1-3 button on this tractor, or if we're dealing with a stagger tractor, it'll be a 1-3-5 button. These are the buttons that would activate a hydraulic system where the tractor or the implement would have something that would be telling our system to work. For example, if the guy is running a tile plow or you're running a scraper that is set up with GPS or water management and or the old style laser hookup, then you would activate these buttons and that way the implement will direct and our remote valve will then activate the system. So there's no need for add-on remote valves on that implement. If we deal with the four buttons up here in the corner, what you have is if the tractor would be equipped with a right-hand lift cylinder in place of the lift link, that button would then work the lift link so you could pitch the hitch down and pitch the hitch back up. We also offer a top link hydraulic cylinder on the tractor. If you've got a top link on the tractor, that would be these two buttons so you can move the mask or the quick hitch out or pull it back without having to turn the turnbuckle. So that's all built in and hydraulically. This switch right here works if the tractor is equipped with a suspended front axle. And with the suspended front axle, when you activate that switch, the front axle is locked out or there is no suspension. The default is suspension. So when it's locked out at a certain speed, i.e. six miles an hour or thereabouts, the suspension will automatically override what you have done and the front axle will give you the suspension. This switch right here works in conjunction with the three-point hitch and this is ride control. With ride control, when this switch is activated, the hitch will actually drop about three inches. And when it drops about three inches, if you've got heavy weight on the three-point hitch, it gives you a little bit of a cushioning effect, so it prolongs or gives the operator a better ride as he or she operates the tractor going down the highway. So the hitch can kind of cushion itself. This switch here dictates if you have a joystick on the armrest. With the joystick, whether you're working with the front remote valves or the rear remote valves. So you get a little icon or a light. This particular tractor does not have the joystick, but you'd have a light that would indicate front, meaning either a mid-mount valve and or if it's hooked to the rear, then the joystick will operate the rear remote valves. So that will dictate where you're at. This orange light right here or orange button and if you activate it and there's a light that comes on, this is one of my favorites. This is engine braking. When this switch is activated, automatically the engine brake is on. Which happens is when you're operating the tractor, anytime you start going down the hill or where you have no load being applied, so on the load cluster, you're at a 0% load and the implement's trying to push the tractor, an engine brake will come on, and what we do is we retard the uh, exhaust valves in the engine, and we're working off the exhaust side, so therefore the engine is being used as a full brake on the tractor. It works automatically, and any uh, tractor that's being operated, let's say with scrapers, with slurry tanks, big grain carts, I would highly encourage you to place this option on the tractor. From there, we're going to come on down into the end of row segment. The end of row segment is going to be a standalone segment because we'll go through some of the programming and operation of the end of row. And the PTO button that you've got here, and it's yellow, and that is tied to the three-point hitch. When you activate this segment, what it's going to do is when you've got the hitch lowered, you can activate the PTO when you raise the hitch and you can adjust how far you want it so as the hitch raises we will deactivate the PTO you can turn around and reactivate this works good for our boys that are down in the south let's say if they're chopping cotton stocks something of that nature when you're running the shredder through the field when you turn around at the headlands you want to stop it 
but rather than running two buttons, you can sync it together with the hitch. It's in the auto mode, so when you raise the hitch, you automatically shut the PTO off. When you turn the tractor around and you drop the, the hitch, you will automatically activate the PTO. It works very similar to what we had with the MFD and diff lock. As you lower the unit, it automatically reactivates it. The one thing I do want to point out would be the constant engine speed. If we deal with constant engine speed on a power shift tractor, the power shift tractor, as you recall when we worked with the CVT, we hit the button and the engine RPMs automatically came up. On a power shift tractor, it works just a little bit different. When you activate, and you've still got the same scenario, you hit the button and you can adjust the engine RPM with the up-down buttons here going up and down. So if you hit the button away from you, the engine RPMs will increase. That's going to work with the throttle. And on a power shift tractor, this is the throttle. So when you go all the way forward, whatever you have your constant engine speed RPM set to, that's as high as it's going to go. When you pull back on the handle, when you get about halfway, you catch whatever speed it's at and you will pull down. For example, if you want to run the PTO speed, just like we did before, you would set yourself at 1800. When I pull about halfway down, below that, now I will bring the engine RPMs down. When I go forward, I will go up to 1800 RPM, and then the further I run the throttle, I'm going to hold or stay at 1800. From there, if we look at the three-point hitch, Dealing with the three-point hitch, I've got these knobs that tie myself together. This knob right here becomes my position control knob. What do I mean by position control? When you're running the tractor in the field, this knob is going to establish the depth or how low you want the three-point link arms to go. So they're going to come down to a pre-described mention or depth that you've got. So if you set this, let's say, at 2, maybe that's going to be at 20%. Whatever it is, that's going to establish your depth. So this is the position control for the implement with the hitch in the lower position. This knob establishes draft control. This is the draft that we've got on the tractor. When we deal with draft, this is the pull that we've got on the lower links. So the draft itself is how much load do we establish? What's that load going to be? And you can increase by turning the unit to your left or decrease as you turn it to the right. And that establishes a load factor. This load factor is going to be set up so that as the load varies, so let's assume you're pulling a fully mounted ripper going through the field. That ripper is using 10,000 pounds of draft load, for example, and maybe at 10 pounds 10,000 pounds, it's set at five. Well, if that's where I want it, maybe I need a little bit more draft and I turn it up, maybe that's 12,000 pounds of draft. What happens is when the soil conditions get heavier, the unit will automatically raise. When the soil conditions get heavy, uh, lighter, the hitch will lower. So it's going to work within a range and it will be bottomed by the setting of the position control knob. To go along with that, I've got three buttons in the rear. These three buttons that work in the rear, this knob right here establishes how fast my implement will lower. So on the heavier implements, you may want to start turning this to a turtle. On a light implement, you may need it to the rabbit, but it's going to be dependent upon the weight. So the heavier the implements, naturally it's going to want to fall quicker. So what you're doing is restricting the oil coming out of the cylinders so that you get a nice flow or a nice even smooth operation out of the hitch. This knob establishes how high do you want the hitch to raise. So when you come out at the headlands, how far up do you want the hitch to go? Do you want that hitch to raise 100% of the point or do you want it to come up just so that shanks or whatever you're pulling clears the ground? And that would be my preference. So you can establish how high do you want the hitch to come up when you turn around. That way you don't need to wait and get that implement to drop down. 
it will drop down and come into the operation of the field without going through a lot of operation. This bottom knob becomes the sensitivity knob, this knob right here. And in a layman's way of looking at how it works, this becomes a travel knob. And if you deal with the travel knob or the sensitivity, it's kind of how far is that hitch going to move when it's automatically towed. So if draft control tells the hitch to raise, how far is it going to raise? So instead of raising uh, just a little bit, you can control it so it raises further, and that gives you the sensitivity. If you've got it working real fast, the tractor is constantly chattering. You can dial the tractor in or dial it down by using the sensitivity knob. Thank you.